Is this construction noise hurting? Or? You can hear me, yeah? Okay, this noise is coming from your end? Yeah, there is construction. They will finish soon, inshallah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, doing outside, you know, some work. Yeah, Bismillah. No problem. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billahi al-aliyya al-azim. Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen wa sallallahu ala sayyidina Muhammad wa alihi al-tayyibin al-tahirin. Allahumma akhrajni min zulumat al-wahm wa akrimni bin nur al-fahm. اللهم افتح علينا أبواب رحمتك وانشر علينا خزائن علومك برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين. الحمد لله we have to feel to continue our study of the book إنسان كامل perfect man by أبو الله متحري. last week we started discussing the idea of people like Nietzsche who think Perfection is just a matter of power, and they have their own definition of power. So this is the second uh, session that he had, Ayatollah Mutahari had on this uh, thought. And here he has a recap, and then he continues. He says, according to Maktab Qudrat, Sorry, according to a school of power, perfection is a matter of power, a strength, and imperfection is just a matter of uh, lack of power, weakness, incompetence. Uh, so for them, good means strong, bad means weak. Uh, he says in philosophy, normally they talk about Kamal and Naqs. And for them, this is very uh, important topic comes everywhere, especially when they talk about Qawwe and Fail, about Haraka, about Wajibul Wujud, about existence in general. They say that uh, perfection is an existential. Uh, quality and when you go to the higher degrees or ranks of existence there is more perfection and one of the things that they mention as perfection is power therefore when they prove the existence of wajibul wujud necessary being and start with the attributes of wajibul wujud they prove power as they proved knowledge and life. Power is one of the qualities of God because it's a perfection. Uh, in Kalam, in the science of Kalam, instead of talking more about perfection and imperfection or Kamal and Nas, they more talk more about Hosnuqob, means goodness and badness. Those who have studied Kalam, they know that we have lots of discussion in Kalam about Khusnuqub. Uh, in Bab Hadi Ash, Alhamdulillah, we discussed this. In uh, Kashful Murad, we discussed this, that Khusnuqub is the basis for many, many discussions about free will, about uh, Jabr, about Qa'idi lot many, many things. So there is an issue of Kamal and Naqs, an issue of Hosn and Qub, depending on whether you are more dealing with philosophy or Kalam. And in Akhlaq, we talk also a lot about uh, goodness and badness, or intrinsic goodness or badness, or, you know, uh, Aqli, Hustokop, Aqli, rational, intellectual goodness or badness, all these things. And in Akhla, uh, uh, we also talk about justice and injustice. 
adl zulm and we say that justice is one of those values if not the only one at least one of the values which is very fundamental which has no exception and according to the late sheikh mudaffar is the complete cause for goodness so all these concepts kamal and nafs in philosophy host and op in kalab adl and zulm in akhlaq for example uh, for the people like nietzsche all is a matter of power and weakness they don't see any other thing as if there is no other progress no other success for any human being except to be become more powerful so ayatollah mutahari says let us evaluate this school of thought the first issue that he mentions is this that they take power as the only value if they had said that power is one of the values or one of the important values one of the central values we could agree with this but to reduce every perfection every virtue to just power is not agreeable so the first problem is why you limit it to power but there is another problem the second issue with this school is why you also take power only to mean physical strengths for example in an animal what is power what is the power in elephant what is the power in for example a horse for example the power is more a matter of physical power ability to move ability to either move uh, other things or move themselves how fast they run how uh, much they can move other things they can lift things it's a physical power or i told you to mutahari it's the power that is coming from muscles is not the power that comes from their intellect maybe they have some power in understanding through perceptions for example some maybe have a power in smelling i don't know in seeing in hearing but all is for body so it seems that people like nietzsche have kept the same meaning of power that we use for animals for human beings and they think a powerful human being is the one that can rule can defeat can destroy others and things like this so we say power is much more than this yes this can be one meaning of power or one dimension of power but it's not the only for example if a human being is a strong in body that's good if through a sport through exercise through diet through uh, a spiritual life you can be stronger in your body that's good that's great but is this the only dimension of power in human beings so here he uh, starts a discussion about what he calls a spiritual power or the power of, of spirit qudrat ruhi if we translate it literally it means spiritual power and you can say also power of spirit he starts with a hadith a well known hadith from the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam once in medina he was passing by some youth and they were exercising and maybe had competition on lifting heavy rocks 
So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told them, do you want me to be the referee, to be the judge between you? And of course, they were very happy and said, for sure. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told them, nas man hawa. The bravest, the strongest people in their will, in their bravery, bravery are those who can dominate their own whims. If you can overcome your own temptations, that's the main power. Power of muscles is good, but if you don't have good will, then you, you will be easily used by bad people. They use you in order to silence or, I don't know, uh, heat or kill, for example, their enemies, you know, weak people, etc., to create, you know, fear among people. You have to have power of the spirit, power of the will. So this is another dimension of power, which actually is more important for human beings. Ayatollah Mutahari says, in Islamic ethics and in our mystical literature, there is emphasis on power, on bravery. Uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ash'u'l nas man ghalaba hawa. Uh, Ayatollah Mutahari doesn't mention this in the a story, but if my memory is not wrong, I think even over there, Rasulullah said this, Ash'u'l nas man ghalaba hawa. He mentions this as a second hadith. Sa'di, the famous poet, says, Gyarat az dast barayad dahani shirin kun. Mardiyan nist ke mushti bezani bar dahani. If you are powerful, if you are able to do something, make someone happy. It's not a sign of being a man, means being brave, to punch someone's mouth. Why you don't make them feel sweetness of life? Why you don't make someone happy? If you are powerful, make people happy. Not attack them and you know destroy them and hit them, etc. Molavi says, Vakt Khashmo, Vakt Shahvat Mardku Talebe Mardi Cheninam Ku Beku. Ku has different meanings. One Meaning of ku means where is he? Where is it? Another meaning is ku in the sense of kui, lane. So he says, in the time of anger, tell me who is a man? Man is not just having mustache or beard. Man is not just having a strong muscle. When someone is angry and can control and suppress his anger, this is bravery. This is a man. Of course, for women also the same. But uh, in you know those uh, terms, you know they were talking, especially for men, you know about power of men, you know physical power. The focus for women was not on power of muscle. And he wants to correct that even for men, it's not power of muscle that is the main thing. It's the power of resisting against your temptations. Vakhte shahwat. Khash means anger, shahwat means, you know, whims, appetites, bad appetites, lower desires. So if you want to understand who is a strong person, look how they deal with their anger how they act when their 
لور دیزایز آر تریگرد طالب مردی چنینم کو به کو from every lane to another lane from every street to another street I am going in order to find such people you can easily find people who have physical strengths but to find people who have spiritual strengths that's difficult So you have to be able to have a strength to act ethically, to act religiously, to act spiritually. And Ayatollah Mutahiya says, of course, you have to be also careful not to mix this with being emotional. Because some people are too emotional. They say, you know, we have to be kind to everyone, even to criminals, for example. We should not do anything. There should be no, for example, prison or, I don't know, punishment. It's not that they say punishment has to be just. Yes, everyone says punishment has to be just. But to say that there must be no punishment at all, this is then not going to work. Saadi says, ترحم بر پلنگ تیز دندان ستمکاری بود بر گوزبندان If you are showing kindness to, for example, tigers who want to attack the goats and sheep, then this is zulm to those animals. If there is a wolf, it is a tiger attacking you're hurt, you have to protect them, not to say, okay, I want to be equally kind to them. Let everyone does what they want. So th this wolf is going to kill many of them. In the society also, we cannot say, okay, we want to be good with everyone, we want to be kind with everyone, we don't want to be you know, against anyone. No, we have to follow principles, values, justice. But all with control over our emotions and over our anger. We shouldn't get angry and do too much against, for example, criminals. Even if a criminal is arrested, they should be dealt with justice and with human dignity. That's correct. But to say that we just let them be free, we want to be kind, you know, it's not going to work. So, Power is very comprehensive in Islamic understanding. Part of it is physical strength. Part of it is spiritual. Part of it is a matter of your understanding and especially your control over your own desires, temptations, your anger, your appetites. What makes a person very powerful is when they are able to wholeheartedly de deal with everything and do what is right with the least of resistance from inside that's the power so if there is a weak there is a vulnerable person that needs my help if i can do this with the least of resistance that's the sign of power. And if there is an unjust oppressor that I need to stop him, either by talking to him or you know, using other methods which are uh, ethical and religiously accepted, power here means to do this with the least of fear and worries and again, resistance from inside so power comes in dealing with people that you want to support or dealing with the people that you want to stop it's very comprehensive and part of it is inside to form a sound judgment 
and to choose the right methods and instruments and means and be able to focus on this. Because sometimes we decide to do something, but we are so much undecided inside and so much you know, worried and have hesitations inside that our energy is drained. It's very important that after you properly assess and after consultation, thinking, asking, whatever is needed, when you make up your mind, then do it wholeheartedly. Before making decision, if you need, take your time. Consult. But then after making decision, you should focus on performance. And of course, have an open eye and ear. If you see that there was a mistake, you can reconsider. But not that you are still sure that you have to continue, but think, think, and think, and this is going to drain your soul. Ayatollah Mutahari says, some people then have gone to the other side of extreme, opposite to Nietzsche. And, you know, they say, you know, we should not, you know, have any uh, kind of punishment uh, for the criminals, etc. And he says, this is also not going to work. There are people that, unless there is a fear of punishment, they may not stop. Then he talks about real power and real strength in our hadith. Amir al-Mu'manin alayhi salam told his children, Kuna lil khasma wa lil madhloom awna. When it comes to the unjust and uh, oppressors, you should be against them. When it comes to the oppressed, you should be supporting them. Awn means help. So, it means that you must not do zulm, number one. Number two, even if other people have done zulm, you must not be supporting them or even be indifferent. You should stand for the justice and help the people who are oppressed. Imam Hussein alayhi salam also is quoted as saying, al qudratu he says this is a very beautiful saying and it's based on uh, understanding psychology of human beings. Imam Hussain says, a strength or power removes hatred. When you are weak and someone has done something bad to you, you suffer a lot and you keep this in your heart and memory forever. You are not able to let it go. When you feel powerful and strong, first of all, you don't easily feel offended. And even if you feel offended, you don't develop hatred. Someone who, you know, this uh, has many, many examples. For example, as a teacher, if you are new to teaching and you are worried and you are not sure about your you know, performance, you have no confidence. When any student asks a question, you are worried. Maybe he wants to you know, ruin my reputation. Well, maybe he wants to damage you know, my position in the eyes of his students and his, his you know, school, etc. Because you are internally worried you think everyone is against you or likely to be against you. Quran says about the hypocrites, they think every person who is screaming is against them. Every person who is you know, uh, shouting is against them. When a thief sees any machine, is <laughs> worried, especially if it's a police machine, <laughs> they think, oh, maybe they have come to arrest them. So in a similar sense, when I am new to teaching, when I'm new to giving lecture, when I'm new to member, I'm worried. And if someone has an honest question and asks me, 
I think maybe, you know, he has a hidden, you know, agenda. Maybe he wants to prove me that I am not capable, I'm not qualified, etc. I'm very worried. But if I am established teacher, you know, established lecturer, and I'm confident, then I don't feel offended when people ask me questions. I don't feel worried when they ask me questions or suggestions, or even if they make criticism. I say, thank you very much. Because I am confident. I, I know that I am qualified. And either this criticism is in the right place or not. It's not the right place, okay. That's fine, it's not going to hurt me. And if it is the right place, okay, I benefit from it. I have no worry. It's really affecting our performance and our emotions when we internally are confident or strong. Some managers, when they are not confident, they make such a, you know, bad decisions, such bad decisions that sometimes, you know, every person that flatters them, they promote them. And those that, you know, are a little bit critical or, you know, honestly, they make, you know, suggestions different from the manager's ideas. They try to get rid of them. So Imam Hussein al -Salam says, al a strength, power, removes hatred. Or Atullah Mutari quotes from Amir al mumin about backbiting. Who are the people who commit backbiting? He says, al al Ghiba is the maximum thing that an incompetent person may do. If you are powerful, if you are able to bring lots of good things uh, to this world, you don't waste your time and energy on backbiting someone who is not present. But someone who is not able to do anything, he starts gossiping or you know, complaining or nagging or backbiting, things like this. These are not going to bring positive changes. He says even about uh, fornication, about adultery, Amir al Mumini says, Ma zana ghayurun qattu. If someone has ghira, if someone has uh, what you know in English may be translated as protective jealousy, a kind of feeling that you feel that you have to protect those things which are valuable. If someone has ghira with respect to his own mother, sisters, wife, daughters, would not commit adultery. So this is the power of a person internally that stops him doing bad things. But Nietzsche doesn't recognize any kind of power except physical power. And this is the second problem, that why you reduce power to only one type of power. So the first problem was why we reduce every value to power. And the second is why you reduce then power to only one type of power, the power of muscles or the power of weapons and swords and soldiers and army. This is all one type of power. Power of ruling over bodies of people with gun, with army, with soldiers, you can rule bodies of people. Why you don't try to rule your own soul first and then win hearts of people? Why you don't try to be kind to people? He quotes also this uh, hadith, Inna Allah Allah doesn't like a believer who is weak. He's a mu'min, but he's weak. So we are not in favor of weakness. What we say, a strength means more. And what you call a strength many times can be a weakness for human being. If someone is very jealous and very miserly, and it's just trying to you know, suppress people, 
we call it weakness, we don't call it a strength. So Alhamdulillah, this session finished. Then in the next session, Ayatollah Mutahari starts studying the school of Mahabba, the school of love. Uh, in, he says this school is more uh, presented in India and to some extent among Christians. But uh, now we don't want to go into the, uh, these associations and you know, see uh, whether they see the, say it in this way or that way, whatever. We just want to see what could be a kind of understanding of Ensan Kamil and evaluate it. So we don't want to attribute anything to any group of people. If some people say, that perfection for a human being is just to be kind and to love and to serve people. Just opposite to what Nietzsche said. For Nietzsche, kindness was a bad thing because we by helping and supporting weak people, you keep human beings weak. He says humanity should get rid of people who are weak so that only strong people remain. This idea is the opposite. We have to be kind. We have to be helping each other. It's very altruistic. Uh, he says even sometimes in our literature, you know, there is exaggeration. For example, Saadi says this, of course, Maybe he wanted to bring a balance because people underestimate this. So maybe Saadi put it in this exaggerated way. Uh, he says, that that Worship is nothing other than serving people. Worship is not a matter of tasbih or sajja, the prayer mat, or dalq. Dalq is the uh, dress or clothes of darwish. You know, people who are known to be darwish, faqir. Uh, you know, the people who are choosing very simple and poor way of life for spirituality. So he says, to have these clothes is not a sign of worshiping God to do tasbih, to be to, you know, doing salat on your prayer mat. These are not signs of worship. Worship is to help people, to serve people. Allah wants us to serve each other when we are meeting people or knowing or, you know, can discover people who are in need, we should help them. This is, of course, an exaggeration because he says, this is the only ibadah. But we have to understand that perhaps he means uh, not to underestimate this. This is the real Ebada in the sense that this is a result of real Ebada. If you really worship Allah, it would lead to helping people. So this is in line with the same idea of school of love, that perfection is a matter of loving people, helping people, or serving people. And for these people, there is only one thing which is bad. And, any, and I mean, centrally, anything bad goes to this. <clears throat> and that is to annoy people, to hurt people. Because to serve people is the main value, then the main wise would be to annoy people. He says, when we study the Quran, for sure, Quran asks us, not only encourages us, urges us to help, to be kind. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna Allah ya'muru bil adli wal ihsan wa ita'i dhil qurba. 
وَيَنْحَا عَنِ الْفَحْشَاءِ وَالْمُنْكَرِ وَالْبَغِيَ This ayah is a very important ayah and this is a summary of Islam. And we have the stories of how some people in the early Islam converted to Islam because of this ayah. In uh, one of the short talks uh, in the months of Ramadan a few years ago, when every day we were talking about one ayah which has a universal message, uh, I mentioned some points about this ayah. So, first, justice. Justice is the red line, the minimum, but it's not enough. We need to do ihsan on top of justice. So first make sure that you give everyone their rights, they do rights. Not that you are kind to some people and unjust to some other people. You are kind to your mother and unkind to your wife, or kind to your wife and unkind to your mother. First, observe justice with everyone, and then try to be kind to everyone except those that your kindness to them may support injustice. As much as you are concerned, you want to be kind to everyone, but if kindness is to lead to injustice, then it will be contradicting with the first instruction, which is Adl. So, إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَأْمُرُ بِالْعَدْلِ وَالْإِحْسَانِ And a special way, giving to the kinship. With respect to the kinship, you have more responsibility. وَإِتَاءِ ذِي الْقُرْبَةِ So, Ihsan is such an important thing to do good to others, to be kind to others, to be benefactor. It's very important. In another ayah, Allah says, Man, as, uh, man ahsanu deen and man, man aslama wajahu lillah wa huwa muhsan. Who is better in religion than someone who has submitted his face to God and is doing ihsan, is a benefactor. Quran talks about ithar. Allah talks about uh, ansar, the companions of the Prophet from Medina, ansar. Allah praises them in this way. They prefer their brothers of muhajireen over themselves, even if they have need. There's a story in Surah Al-Hash, number nine, about, you know, there was a, a case of distributing some, you know, booties, how Rasulullah consulted them and what they answered. يُؤْثَرُونَ عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ وَلَوْ كَانَ بِهِمْ خَسَاسَةً Or about Ahlu al-Bayt alayhi wasalam in Surah Insan or Halata. وَيُطْعِمُونَ الطَّعَامَ عَلَىٰ حُبِّهِ مِسْكِينًا وَيَتِيمًا وَأَسِيرًا Even if they had very little food, it's not that they had extra. Even they had to give their own food which they needed for breaking their fast, they gave it to a needy person, to an orphan, to a captive. So certainly kindness to people is very important in Islam. He brings also the expression of love as a kind of kindness. For example, the famous story that once one of the people who still had traces of akhlaq and ethos of pre-Islam era, he saw that Rasulullah is showing kindness to some of his, you know, grandchildren and, you know, kissing and, you know, playing, etc. He said, I have 10 children and I have never kissed them, never kissed any of these 10 children. In one hadith, Rasulullah 
is described that when he heard this faltama'a wajhu rasulullah his face became red means he was very unhappy to hear that someone has not kissed any of his children and he said man la yarham la yurham if you don't show mercy you will not be shown mercy we have many cases about rasulullah about imam ali about other imams how kind they were even to the people who were against them the story of imam hasan mushtaba alayhi salam that person from sham that was insulting was swearing at imam but instead of imam attacking him or doing anything imam said it seems that you are not from this town if you need any place you know we can offer you you know hospitality so certainly love kindness helping people are very important but is this the only thing is this the only sign of perfection or is it the only requirement of perfection that's another thing inshallah we continue this discussion in the next week alhamdulillah rabbil alamin jazakallah sheikh ya allah bless now the floor is open to ask questions so please use the option for raise hand Yes, brother Javed Akhtar, please raise your question. Ji, okay, okay, okay. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum My name is uh, Javed Hassan Akhtar from Dera Ghazi Khan, Pakistan. Masha. Thank you very much, Avajan. Uh, a very valuable thirst on power of um, power. Uh, okay, uh, the uh, school of power. Sir, I have just a, a concern. is there is there a power of sixth sense or uh, hypnotism or whatsoever in islam sixth sense power of sixth sense in islam or ha- yes hypnotism or whatsoever yeah i i cannot understand sir you cannot there are five senses hawa se khamsa is there is there any other sense ah, is there any sense. other sense sixth sense aha uh-huh. okay yeah. <laughs> sorry yeah the noise here i was not <laughs> thank you thank you much thank you. yes of course sixth sense uh, we have to define it but for sure for sure human beings in addition to the five senses they have other ways of sensing you know sometimes okay you but you cannot trust of course you know it is not hujja but sometimes okay you you meet someone and you sense something you, a kind of worry and then you realize later that this person for example was not sincere or sometimes you know you are in a place all of a sudden you think that for example you have to go away is possible one of uh, you know things that sometimes people happen to them that for example uh, there is an earthquake coming and all of a sudden they feel worried they go outside and then earthquake you know destroys the house no one told them there was nothing you know all of a sudden there is a you know uh, kind of feeling that they have to leave this place Uh, we have many different ways and especially those who are very uh, spiritual then they understand many things so one of uh, people that i very much you know respect and very knowledgeable and spiritual so i heard from someone one of his students that for example in qom once 
he had a strong feeling to go to a certain place in Hope and then to go to a certain lane and then a certain house. And when he knocked the door, he found a very a spiritual person over there. He didn't know that person is there. Just in his heart was feeling that he has to go to that place. Uh, but as I said, you cannot trust all these things because sometimes uh, we may make mistakes or we may, we may not have clear message then we add to it and then so therefore if you meet someone and you feel bad or good you can consider this but don't take this as a hoja as a proof and say this person is definitely good or different definitely bad you have to inquire you have to take time if you want to for example you know marry someone or you know give answer to someone who proposed marriage for example Sometimes you feel something, but it's not enough to use as hoja. Yes, next, brother Muhammad Shah, you want to ask a question? Muhammad Siftan Shah, could you please unmute yourself? Well, in a chat, he said that he, he wants to ask a question, but uh, he's not able to unmute himself. Okay. So next, uh, Brother Asif. Can you unmute yourself and ask a question? No, sir. Thank you. I'm from Kashmir. Okay, go ahead. Brother Asif, go ahead. So next is Dr. Aline Rizvi. Please unmute yourself and go ahead. Assalamu alaikum wa alaikum wa salam wa rahmatullah. Uh, Aline Fatima Rizvi from Islamabad, Pakistan. Um, so I've got a couple of questions interlinked somehow. Uh, first of all, uh, the topic that, that you touched upon uh, regarding kindness. Now, yes. this very uh, thing is used by the so-called liberals um, very specifically uh, quoting the events from our history. For example, Imam Ali alayhi uh, salam, after being struck um, uh, in, in Masjid Kufa, when the um, culprit was brought in front of him, uh, he, he asked his children to offer him a drink first. Then um, could you please confirm if this, um, this narration about Imam Hussein salam is correct, that after all of his army, all of his relatives had been um, martyred, and he was alone, he, even then, he offered to forgive the other side if they listened to him. So that sort of stuff is used as by, by the liberals and the people who are, are anti-punishment. Um, sh should I ask all the questions or would, would you please yeah, answer the first one? Yeah, can ask, yes. Okay, then um, re regarding what the brother before me said uh, about sixth sense, uh, and uh, I'm, I'm very pleased that you uh, pointed out that without spirituality, sixth sense is not exactly reliable. So is that what happened when Masjid Jamkaran was built? Uh, because without six sense, uh, I mean, without six, uh, sorry, without spirituality, if you're having a dream that you're, for example, flying, everybody is going to claim that uh, we, we had the experience of Maharaj. So spirituality has to be there. So um, 
is is this what happened when Masjid al when the boundaries of Masjid al Jamkaran were set? So that's my second question. Thank yes. you so much, El Tamasadoa. You're welcome. Uh, regarding the first question, yes, uh, actually, Ayatollah Mutahari has a discussion here about those who are against any kind of punishment or against capital punishment altogether. And uh, he says that sometimes there is no other way. Of course, there are very uh, uh, carefully uh, explain conditions in Islam for punishment and also who can be the judge. It's not that everyone can be judged. It's not that every judge can easily make decisions, etc. But in certain cases, there is possibility of capital punishment and need for that, or for example, other types of... And we should not just uh, be kind and say, no, no punishment is needed or no capital punishment is needed at all. Yes. Unfortunately, some societies, they overdo it in some societies, for example, they are not careful. But we say there must be such a provision in law to have certain ways of dealing with very vicious criminals. Uh, what we have in the case of uh, Ahlul Bayt is that they never, for example, uh, stood against Islamic code of punishment. But when it was possible and Islamic law permits or it was you know, something personal and again, not against Islamic law, of course, they were trying to forgive. They were trying people to uh, forgive each other. Even, you know, sometimes people wanted to admit to Imam Ali when he was Khalifa about some of their, you know, scenes and, one, you know, they were saying, you know, for example, Taherni, clean me from this scene. But Imam trying to avoid listening to their admission and, you know, bring excuses. Maybe it didn't happen as you think, you know, it's things like this. But they were keeping insisting, insisting, insisting to admit in the full Flesh details, and you know, so then Imam had to execute the punishment. Uh, in the case of Imam Hussein, alayhi salam, uh, for sure, Imam Hussein, alayhi salam, even not only before, but even on the day of Ashura, was hoping to offer opportunities to people to change, and this is why he was talking to them. But this doesn't mean that without their change, without their return, without their toba, Imam was saying that, you know, they will be forgiven. Imam cannot forgive on behalf of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But Imam can invite them for change, can invite them for uh, return, even if they have been very, you know, cruel to him and his family. So Ahlul Bayt never developed, you know, hatred against people. Even, uh, for example, uh, you know, Washi, the killer of, you know, uh, Hamza, Hazrat Hamza. So Rasulullah forgave him when he asked for, you know, forgiveness. Uh, regarding Masjid al Karan, what was there is not that it was a dream. Uh, so if you go to the website of Masjid al Karan, so they say that the details, and it was uh, in awakeness. So they say it was in Bidari, not in Kha. If it was in the dream, then dream is not Hujja, unless there are some proof, you know, some evidence that this dream was true. For example, you know, something about future that you see, then it happened. Things like this. But dream in general is not hoja. But this was in awakeness. 
and there is a quotation also there from you know some of great scholars that uh, they were you know in support of this story for us today of course if you are not sure and you know because it, it's very difficult to establish historical facts you can you know have reports and reliable reports but you know when there is for example khabar wahid even if it's a reliable person maybe you don't become certain but for us it's enough if we see that this is not something that had no history and all of a sudden after 1000 years you know people start talking if you see that over history the greatest scholars century after century have been showing recognition to this place and then lots of people have said their prayer there lots of people go there and do dua tawassul and it's masjid i think this is a good a good enough to make this place a place that we can feel we can be close to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala although you can be close to allah in any place of worship in any place that many people have worshiped there but there are reliable reports and there is a recognition and respect by our ulama. But you don't want to say you must believe in this or you must be 100% sure. No, it's not sometimes possible to be 100% sure. Many of historical details, you know, for example, if you take any book of history, it's very difficult to say, Wallahi, all these details are from cover to cover correct. Unless something is mutawatir or, you know, so frequently narrated that we can be certain. What is enough in history is to have reference, reliable references. So this was not based on the or sixth sense. So next I throw to Sister Batu. You are welcome. Thanks for your questions and may Allah bless you, inshallah. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Alaikum assalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My question is uh, about court you shared uh, of Amir al Mumini al Islam, give it to mostly. Yeah. yeah. Please explain a little more. Yeah, so you know, those who are not able to do anything for themselves or, you know, uh, for other people, then they just, you know, look for opportunity to talk against uh, other people. Even if, for example, they are Muslim, okay, carry on with your life. Do other things. What's the benefit? Yes. If there is a person that can help you against zulm here it's okay quran says la yuhibbullahu al-jahra bis-su'a min al-qawl illa man zulm allah doesn't want you to talk in public about bad things happen to you unless you are mazlum and ulama say mazlum can do tazallum what does it mean can go for example to someone who has power to help him like the judge a qualified judge and say you know or you know sometimes ulama can help that you know my neighbor or you know, I don't know my husband my i don't know colleague they are doing zulm to me for example uh, and you need someone to help you to stop them in these cases maybe okay but if then what's the benefit of riba it's just a matter of temporarily releasing your anger, but it's not helping. And also sometimes it can create more problems that the person hears and it becomes you know, more hostile towards you. And also it's a sin, unless there are exception, exceptional cases that are defined in fact. So Amir al says, do something positive, do something productive. For example, if you are a student and your classmate has done bad thing to you, okay, talk to him, whatever is needed, but don't get stuck here. Study more, learn other skills, you know, 
do as much as you can to improve yourself, to bring goodness to yourself and other people, not getting stuck just with backbiting. So people who are, for example, you know, we hear about some of the scholars, you know, for example, Imam Musa Sadr. You know, some people unfortunately were talking against him even inside the Shia community. Uh, Sometimes even some scholars were against him. But he was never talking against any that one. Even he was not talking about them in their presence. And there was a majlis that one of the scholars who has many books uh, was on member and when he saw Imam Musa Sad, he started on member talking against him. Maybe he felt responsible, I don't know. He talked against Imam Musa Sad. And Imam Musa Sad, when he came down from member, was supposed to speak after him. He hugged him and thanked him and sat on member and didn't say anything. He could have used member to, you know, defend himself, to attack that person. So those who worked with him, they say he never complained about anyone. The late Ayatollah al-Uzma said, Hadi Milani Mashhad. He was a marja, was great marja in Mashhad. So many times, you know, people, even sometimes his own students talked against him, but he never defended himself because they have much more to do and they ask Allah to defend them. And Allah Allah defends the believers. I'm not saying you have to not answer when needed, but I'm saying you have to have such control over your nafs that if you need to answer, it's not because you are angry. Sometimes we have to tell the truth. Otherwise people keep, you know, repeating the rumors against us, whatever. But not just as an emotional reaction that, you know, I feel bad, you know, I have to do something to defend myself. No, for the sake of cause, if needed, with the least of personal attachments, you explain things. Uh, sorry, just a moment. Someone is... Yes. Mr. Zara, can you please ask your question? This is the last question for the session. Okay. Um, I'm not in your uh, Asnabrika Molada. Alaikum I'm, 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 I, I, I came late. I don't know the others. I don't know the subject. But the question is from uh, is for Quran. Yeah. And um, I heard uh, a long ago um, there is a different Musaf in different writings. In some of the countries, we, we know the one Quran, but there is a different meanings. The actual, the actual meaning is different, but the people uh, writing style is different in other countries. Do you know anything about that? Because some, some, um, um, some uh, I don't know, in, in your, I, uh, where you live in London? Yes. You live in London? Okay, I heard some of the uh, London people, they do, they criticize and uh, talk about the Quran and there is 26 Masa. Maybe you know that. Is a, no. You have a park over there, it's a very famous park. Some of the people doing the um, uh, criticize and uh, it's, it's a very bad. Maybe mm. I, I heard many things and I see on the YouTube and they they did that and they 
they criticize about Islam and the Muslims because they don't know how many Quran they have. Mm-hmm. Maybe you know that, so just tell us. I haven't heard this especially about London, but in any case, what we have is we have different qira'at, different recitations. So there are seven qira'at, which are tawatir in the Muslim world, and there are many which are not that famous. But the one that we normally, and also um, in most of Muslim countries, they normally use is qira'at of hafs and asim. So hafs from Asim, which actually goes back to Amir al So Alhamdulillah, this is the most popular recitation. The difference is not that much. In some words, sometimes it's a matter of different pronunciation and sometimes they can make different meaning. For example, is it Malik Yawmuddin or Malik Yawmuddin? Sometimes it can make a little change in the meaning. But the most popular one is Hafs from Asim, which is what you know we normally use. In addition to qiraat, we have writing styles. So kitaba. For example, uh, in um, many places nowadays, for example, they use the you know writing of you know Osman Taha. Uh, for example, there's a special way of putting Aleph or there's a special way of designing every page. So they design every page in the way that it begins with the verse and ends with the verse. So no verse goes to the next page. These are writing styles. In Iran, you know, some Marajas suggested, for example, to have a special writing, which is uh, clearer for people and easier. So there are some issues of writing, which is kept from before. Uh, So for example, even sometimes, according to Arabic grammar, there shouldn't be alif after the first siqa. You know, if you know sarf, for example, yad'u. Yad'u doesn't have alif. But early generations, when they were writing Quran, sometimes they put alif where it is not need. And although this is not about revelation, but Muslims, in order to keep things as early centuries, they have kept even these things so that there is no change. But these are just the way people wrote it. And today you can write it in a different way. What is important is that the words, the letters must not change. The pronunciation must not change, but writing, you can write it in different ways. Uh, Now even, you know, the Quran, which is published in, for example, Pakistan, India, maybe it's different from what is published in Saudi Arabia, you know, the letters, etc. you know, the fonts, but that's not a big thing. The main thing is recitation, and as long as they follow the, one of those reliable recitations, especially halves from Asim, that's fine. Thank you Echo, for this, uh, answering this question. Just a quick reminder for the interest of all participants, yeah. Our preference is that questions should be asked around the theme of the topic de- deliberations yeah. that is covered by, by Sheikh. Otherwise, we are wasting the our time for the other participants. Sheikh, I can see two more raised hands. Can we take those uh, questions or leave it? Yeah, for we can minute? take one more, inshallah. Okay, Sister Farad, can you, can you uh, unmute yourself and pose your question? Sister Farad. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. First of all, uh, I am sorry I could not hear the uh, lecture from the beginning. Inshallah, inshallah, I will uh, hear it uh, later in the recording. But the last lecture, which was the first one uh, from the power section, I heard it and I had a question, but unfortunately I ran out of time. My question is regarding uh, the topic uh, of power. Uh, yes. The question is, a, it's, it's a very simple question. Maybe uh, my participant would say that she is so unknowledgeable that she doesn't know. But I, this question is from daily life. Mm-hmm. Like when we have uh, servants or maids, which we have in our house, 
And sometimes they don't behave, sometimes they don't listen, sometimes they don't comply to the rules and regulations of the household. And uh, um, I mean, it's my own example that I have uh, forgiven them. I have just uh, ignored their uh, mistakes and their misbehavior several times, several times, just because of khauf e khuda because he has given me power. He has given me everything. So I should not be harsh. I should not be stubborn. I should not be uh, cruel or something like that. Alhamdulillah, we are not like that. So I have forgiven them and uh, just, uh, I mean, uh, 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 overlooked their mistakes. But over time, they have not learned they have not complied to the rules and regulations. They have not, uh, uh, I mean, um, uh, uh, rectified their mistakes. So now I have asked them to leave and uh, politely, very politely, I asked them and I told them, see, if you make a mistake, uh, you should say, I'm sorry, apology is there. But if they don't even apologize, then it is a stubborn behavior. I explained them that this is a wrong behavior. Even Allah Ta'ala doesn't like it. If we uh, uh, commit a sin, he expects us to say, Astaghfirullah, I'm sorry, I will not do it again. But you people don't listen. So I have uh, asked them to leave and I have just, uh, I mean, fired them <laughs> in, in, in our day-to-day -day language. Is this a wrong use of power? I'm very, very uh, afraid that my God should not be, uh, I mean, uh, he, he should not, I'm, I'm, he is all knowing, he knows my, my near. But I was very disturbed. Have I done a wrong thing by firing them? Uh, thank you very much. You're welcome. And can they find another job? Yes, of course. Yes, of course. I mean, there are several jobs, but at this moment, uh, I don't know, because since I have fired them, I don't know where uh, they, have, they have found or they have uh, still looking or not, but they are in demand. They will find it, inshallah. And mm. I uh, ask them to leave with prayers that, inshallah, you will find a good place. Mm. But due to your this behavior, I had to fire you. I'm sorry. Yeah, you know, it's a very difficult situation with the... Uh, servants or even you know when you are a manager you have you know employees you know yeah because on the one side you want uh, efficiency you find you want everything be organized on the other end you have ethical responsibilities and as a muslim manager or employer you consider everyone like your own family you want their own good as well and you know sometimes for example we expect from our children to be better in their behavior but they are not we keep and they are not what we do we have to be patient but we have to also do tarbia it's not just you know to listen to them or you know if just ignore but tarbia is something that takes time takes energy needs patience so what i can say in general way is that uh, you try not to be angry with them but try to step by step gradually uh, you know, working on improvement of their performance. Whether they apologize or not, that is uh, something secondary. They should, but if they don't, but just improve, this is enough. Because sometimes uh, maybe it's difficult for them to say, you know, I made mistake. For us, the main thing is that they don't do this again, not that they apologize. Mm -hmm. So with patience you have to try to help them to improve uh, this is good for them as well and even if they go to other places they will be appreciated more uh, but to uh, fire them uh, you have to see if for example they are going to suffer they are not going to find another job and their family is going to struggle then maybe you need to be patient more patient but if they can find another job easily uh, then that's easier you can say you know with respect you know uh, i have tried you know uh, this time this time this time for example and 
it didn't work. You are a good person, but maybe we cannot work together. And I pray for you. I give you some gift also. So that ends peacefully and nicely. But mm -hmm. if they cannot find another job, then it's difficult, you know, unless you really, you know, suffer and, you know. So I have had this problem sometimes where I have worked that there are employees that I don't find them useful that much. But then I'm concerned, you know, about their, you know, family, et cetera, whether they can find another job. They have worked, for example, in this place for many years. So it's very difficult to be both efficient and ethical. You can be just ethical and you can be just efficient, but to be both, it's very difficult. And we have to learn and we have to ask Allah for help. Uh, but we have actually cases that, for example, uh, in the case of imams, alayhim salam, that sometimes there's, you know, servants were not very obedient sometimes. For example, once uh, one of the imams said to his servant to do something and he didn't do it. The imam said, why you didn't listen? He said, amen to ka. He said, because I felt safe. <laughs> I knew that you are not going to beat me or, you know, do anything harsh. <laughs> amen to ka. Uh, uh, you know, someone said uh, it's in uh, Hadith Asaf documentary. Allah uh, had an old person that was helping him. Maybe even this person says maybe it was coming from their own city, you know. So at some time he had someone to help him. He said, once uh, I was uh, talking with Allah and he's uh, servant seemed that, that was a sleeping something like this and when he heard us talking uh, or maybe they, he knocked the door and you know he was uh, sleeping so he said to Allah in Farsi when someone you know knocks the door you know quickly or you know asks us to go quickly uh, we say, I guess, Sarah, what it means, have you brought a head? You know, something like this. Is there something urgent? And Allah told him, look, you know, the way he behaves with me. Uh, but he was not, you know, reactive. So patience is needed, but at the same time, tarbiya. And make them, you know, learn things. Uh, so... I hope, inshallah, Allah helps us in all these cases, because actually these are real life scenarios where we need to be very much uh, working on our own selves to learn how to deal with these cases, to be very ethical, but at the same time uh, to make sure that we make uh, progress towards our aims, our legitimate aims. Thank you. May Allah bless you, inshallah. Mashallah, you have a very good wisdom, Mashallah. You're it's welcome. very difficult to find people like you nowadays. May Allah bless you, Inshallah. Okay, I can just pray and uh, conclude this session. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Allahumma kulli waliyyika al-hujjat ibn al-Hasan salawatuka alayhi wa ala abaih fi hadhi al-sa'ah wa fi kulli sa'ah waliyyam wa hafadam wa qa'adam wa nasirah ودليلا وعينا حتى تسكنه أرضك طوعا وتمتعه فيها طبيلا ظن علينا ورضاه وحب لنا رأفته ورحمته ودعاه وخيره Oh Allah, please send your salutations to Muhammad and all Muhammad. Please bless the souls of all marhumin, especially yes. those who have rights upon us. Please bless our parents who are alive with health and dignity. And those who have passed away with generosity and kindness to them. And please give shifa to all people who are ill, people that have asked for dua, people that we are concerned for them. Give shifa to all ill people, please. And please make Faraj of Imam Zaman easy and soon and enable us to help him and serve him before and after he comes. Amin, Ya Rabbalan. شكرا